Good morning. Happy Thursday, March 25th, 2021. This is Morning Joey. I'm your host, Joey Molinero. Thanks so much for waking up with me uh, this morning, per usual. Got a great show today. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel below. Like the videos. Come back, watch them later. Share the links. You know the deal. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Subscribe to the channel below. Your cup of Joey coffee mug below as well. Um, all the new merch that I've been pubbing. You have the One Last Ride uh, t-shirt with Juju and Big Ben. You have the It's Not uh, Tournament Time, or It's Not Company Time, It's Tournament Time t-shirt as well. Obviously, uh, in the Insanity, like I said, the Cup of Joey dad hat, the Cup of Joey coffee mug. All that is available on the Barstool Sports Store. Uh, been a crazy morning, but thanks so much for waking up with me. Hey, we're nine months away from Christmas. My friends on the Today Show reminded me of that this morning when I was doing some prep for the show. Nine months away. Not bad. Big Christmas guy. So that's something to look forward to, right? Uh, nine months away from that, but today we got a great show. Emmett Skilton, uh, my man, who has been cast uh, as playing young Coach O on the show Young Rock on NBC, the show about uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson and his coming up and his coming of age. Uh, Emmett plays young Ed Orgeron when he was um, a D-line coach and an assistant at the U uh, way back in the day. Uh, so Emmett's going to join me here about 930. We're going to talk about you know, how he came from New Zealand to America to, to you know be an actor and then to how he gets this role as Coach O and, and if he's had any interaction with him and just a lot of great stuff. I figured it could be fun. Maybe we'll get a dual Go Tigers uh, coming from the guy who plays a young Coach O and guy me who you know has been known to do a coach impersonation so that's coming up at 9 30 uh again like i said subscribe 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 let's keep growing the channel it's keeping you know it's, it's on the up and up we're continuing to grow i appreciate you and it's all because of you so let's subscribe and get that thing going all right let's get into it i tweeted it this morning um how to take the wife to work only on one car but i tweeted it this morning because i was thinking about it you know, when somebody announces that they're pregnant and that they're going to have a baby, start a family, congratulations. That's awesome. You know, I'm not saying that that's us. That was a bad lead in after talking about taking my wife to work. <clears throat> We're not expecting a kid. But what I'm saying is for the people who are and one of the 10,000 things that comes before, you know, actually having the child, they have the diaper parties. Diaper parties are a real big thing now. Hey, come over, hey, let's go to this bar and, you know, bring a pack of diapers. And because, you know, you go through so many when, when you have the kid and, you know, it's just shitting everywhere and doesn't know any better. That's fair. But I, I think there needs to be something of a counter of that, that when you get a puppy, you should have a paper towel party. Because I'm going to CVS every other day to get a new 12 pack because my man who's zonked right now and is knocked out. He, he, he's, just, he's just ripping through them. Luckily, we have hardwood floors. So, you know, if he drops a little tinkle or he takes a little shit and it's like right on the potty pad or right next to the potty pad, he always does that. It's not, you know, we'll lay down like two or three of them or four. So he has this big, huge radius, right? And he's, he's always just off target. He'll get it like half on, half off. He's learning. You know, he's doing better. I taught him how to sit. But like I said, I mean, just paper towels after paper towels after paper towels. It's killing me. It's like I said, I, then I followed up with a tweet. I was like, he's going through 12 packs like Johnson. <laughs> 12 packs of paper towels. I think we need to introduce the paper towel party. But then, you know what? You know what the shitty thing is about that, though, is that he introduced that you're going to have people who come because everybody's looking for an excuse to get together, but nobody's going to want to be that. Like, then you're just going to be the absolute worst if you introduce that. Because barely anybody wants to go to the diaper party for a kid. So imagining somebody posting on Facebook or, you know, sending out an evite uh, to your paper towel party for your puppy. Puppy's first paper towel party. 
And you know that's a real thing. Like you know there are plenty of people out there who will actually do that or who would actually do that. And there's plenty of people out there who would say, oh, these people are the fucking worst. I don't even like them. Don't even like the ugly ass dog, but I guess we'll go because we have anything else to do. Again, double-edged sword. Catch 2020. Still can't figure that out. I don't know. I, if I saw that on Facebook, I'd probably unfriend the person. You know? There's just so many things that you have to do now whenever something new happens in your life. Like like I said, like uh, I've talked about last week. We'll get more into it because we're going to talk about wedding reception songs that gets the crowd going no matter what coming up later. But, you know, with a wedding, you know, Pick a venue, and you got to have a bridal shower on both sides, and you got to have the bachelor bachelorette parties, and you got to pick the cake, and you got to get the the person who's doing the food, and you got to pick the venue, and then what are we gonna do for music? And then I don't know. And is Grandma gonna be able to make it? Well, Grandma doesn't like the Catholic Church, and then there's like a million things just for one day of getting married, right? And then when you have a kid. You know, we got a baby shower, and we got a gender reveal, and we got a name reveal, and we got a, a fucking diaper party, and we got, I mean, it just never ends, dude. So all I'm saying is for those people like me who went the puppy route before the kid, you know, the puppy's considered, considered your child, you know? That trial run, like I talked about, for being a parent. Why not throw a little paper towel party? We're all struggling with the paper towels. All right. Think about it. So last night I was, I play in a Euchre league on Wednesday nights. And like I've told, said before, for those who don't know Euchre, um, regional game, Midwest game, you know, very, very popular in Indiana, card game. And, um, you know, it's two part, you know, it's, it's four person game. It can be more, but that's difficult. So it's typically a four person game, you and a partner, they have a partner. And we're at this we're, we're at we're at this bar where the games take place, and there's just nothing worse than adult lingerers, you know. Like if you're a kid, all all kids linger. They don't know any better. They haven't picked up the social cues yet, right? They don't know. They can't read body language. They don't have like a sense of the field. They just like stare at you they don't give a shit it's fine they're kids they're just kids but when you're an adult and you haven't figured that out yet you've got some problems it's time to figure it out like there is there is i don't even know these people's names i'm not going to really give a description or anything like that because you know it's a public show and i'm probably going to see him next week but my general point is, is that when you're like playing a game and it's the four people playing the game and you're the fifth person, it's just kind of like lingering, standing around the table and like offering commentary to the people who are actually playing. Just get the hell out. There's nothing worse than that. And then on top of that, when they're not common, commenting on the game that's going on that they're not a part of. Then all of a sudden, when the night wraps up and it's like, oh, maybe we'll go grab a beer somewhere, then they're kind of like throwing themselves the invite. Like you and your people that you're there with. All right, so what are we thinking? And then that person's like, yeah, what are we thinking? We've got what? uh, I'm down, boys. What are we thinking? Weren't talking to you, man. Just take like 10 steps back, turn around, and get out. Uh, it's it's amazing to me, and I guess I'm lucky because, you know, I've never maybe they're like new to the city or new to the neighborhood, and you know they're just trying to they're just trying to make friends. But even with that being said, there's still like a different way to go about it than that. Like you can't just like run into people one night and. You know, you're, you're lingering around their table or like they converse with you for a little bit, but they're clearly with a the group and all of a sudden you're just like throwing yourself in there. 
that's not how it works. Yeah, boys, what do you think? We uh, we doing it? We we doing it big? I'm ready. Where are we going? All right, no. We're going here. You are yet to be a part of this. We don't even know your name. <sighs> My buddy pulled something out of his ass. It was hilarious. And what was even worse, though, is like, you know, that you, you know, that what my buddy said to this guy, the guy wasn't buying it either. But it's that awkward. We both know what's going on. And you did this to yourself. So now we have to bullshit with you to tell you that you can't come. So we're actually um, it's this private thing uh, with just us four um, that is at a public place. It's right over here that. You know, you know, they only have four at a table, so uh, see you next week, dude. Oh, yeah, dude, no, I understand. Okay, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah cool. I'll probably just stay here anyways. Right. <laughs> just talking about where we going afterwards. Don't be a lingerer. Just just pick up, you know, like if, if, if they're – if if you're around a group and they're talking amongst themselves and you're, you if you feel they haven't addressed you yet, Every time they're talking about like what's next or what the plan is, and they're only, you know, you're you're here. They're in like this little L shaped here, and they're only talking to each other and not even uh, addressing you with their eyes. It's time to say, hey guys, um, good good hanging, uh, good game. I'll see you next week. All right, cool. There we go. Then once you walk away, then that group's probably like, yeah, that guy's pretty cool. Maybe next week we should like you know, hey, come with us. But if you're in that same spot and they're talking to each other and you're just like, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. And they're kind of like startled. Like I didn't even think you were listening and now you're coming with us. <laughs> can't do that. You just can't do that. Logan, how many cups of coffee do you drink a day? Uh, it just depends. I'm not like Stu Finer. I'm probably pretty close though. Uh, in terms of like, Stu said he drinks 10. Mm, uh, half that, you know, four or five. Half that on like a day where I'm really like trying to be productive and I just like like to have something to drink on. But then on, a, on another day, maybe like three or four. So anywhere from three to five is, is a good. And when I'm in the office or or an office, that's that that number goes up because I'm always just you know I'm working and I'm down in it and then it's so readily available always right there, um, so then maybe I'm up closer to Stu Finders but yeah three to five on like a normal day when I'm working from home. Yeah, so I did this um I did this <clears throat> video yesterday and it was about like douchebag baseball dads because you know spring has sprung and we're there. And everybody is is getting out to tryouts and getting back into their into their travel leagues and their baseball leagues, and I grew up with that man. That's that's like my whole life from like six years old to um, from from six years old to seventeen. It was you know hardcore baseball, and so I was around all these kinds of dads. And if you haven't seen it, it's up on YouTube channel. It's up on my socials now. But man, I can't stand those guys who like, they just take the fun out of the game for everybody, for the kids, for the other parents, for whoever is brave enough to coach these crazy ass parents' kids when they're nine years old. They just take the fun out of it, man. And I don't know if it's just like an ego thing. I think it is probably where they feel like they have to prove something to like themselves, I guess, or like the other people around them that like, oh yeah, that's, that's my kid. You know, my kid's doing this and he's, we have him here. We have him doing this and he's so advanced for his age. He's eight years old and, 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 you know, he, he he's already thrown from, you know, 60 foot mound and uh, I got to take him with some metal spikes on the weekends and like get him used to those. It's like, guy, he's eight, dude. He's nine. Like, they should be looking more forward to 
the the snack ticket after the game and getting like you know a, a nerd rope and a walking taco. <laughs> Those dads are all they always have sunglasses. They always have Oakley sunglasses. We talked about Oakleys yesterday. They always have Oakley sunglasses either on or they're upside down on top of their hat. Probably have a barbed wire tattoo. Their name is either Dean or Carrie or um, yeah, Dean or Carrie or Chad. Always talking like all all of those dads somehow all of their kids are like eight years away from high school, but they already have like a relationship with the high school coach and like take them over there to, you know, work out with the team, you know, by special invite. It's like, no, man, the high school coach didn't invite your kid to come play there. He's eight. Baseball dads, dude. I think I think baseball dads are the worst out of out of all of them. Maybe it's just because that's my you know it's so near and dear to my heart, and I knew so many of those people. Like when I was growing up, I had like baseball dads who would like talk shit to me when I was like ten. Like I'd be ten years old, and they would like after a game would like subtly and passive aggressively like talk shit about how I played. Hey, yeah. A couple ground balls in the second baseman. Yeah, you know, pretty solid. I was like I legitimately remember being like ten or eleven years old and just doing one of those and kind of like looking at my dad. I was like, is he serious? You know, and God love my dad. He's you know, he's not like a confrontational guy like that. So you know, he's not going to be a douchebag baseball dad and be like, you talk about my kid when your kid can't even hit the hit the curveball on a, on a one-two count? You know, and get into some crazy fight and end up on, you know, our, you know, Barstool's page or something. Football dads have a chance to be like hard asses, but I think football dads are, football dads are mostly just coaches, you know? I feel like if you're a, fo- if you're a dad and your kid plays football hardcore, like, I haven't run into as many dads who are like that. Like, it's just a baseball thing. The dads who are like that with football, they coach. And so then, like, they kind of become coachy and take themselves really seriously in that way. But the dads aren't that bad. Maybe basketball dads. I've had a few people request that. Like, get the AAU dad who's, like, yelling at the official and shit like that. From Andrew, the ultimate baseball dad Oakley moves to have them upside down and backwards so lens on the back of their hat. It's just the absolute worst. From Brendan, extreme hockey parents fall in there as well. Yeah, see, I my father-in-law, my my brother-in-law played hockey uh, when they were younger and stuff. And, you know, I so they would know more about that. But, you know, then again, like my wife – cheered competitively her whole life. So she could probably give me some really great material on like cheer parents. Um, my sister, my youngest sister is in show choir. <laughs> so I was around a few of them when I'd go to a few of her like show choir events and shows. Dude, this always killed me. They couldn't like, that was like their way of like showing that they thought it was like hot. They're like fanning off the performance. So when they like stuck a nice move or whatever, did something crazy with the routine, the moms would just be like, <laughs> literally fanning them. <laughs> See, with show choir and theater parents, the the crazy ones are the ones who are involved as well. They're the ones who do the wardrobe. They're the ones who. Uh, wash the clothes and the stuff afterwards. They're the ones who drive the bus. <laughs> From Katie. Morning, Katie. Uh, Jim dance, cheer mom's next level. Look, kid is the next Simone Biles. Yeah. And see, that's what, like, that's the problem is when you have, 
the age group from like six until like 12 for any, for any sport, for any activity, you know, every parent, the, the, the jury is still kind of out. Like you, you, at that point, you're like, man, my kids hit a few bombs. He's nine. Like, I, I think we might have something here. I think he could play for, uh, I think he could play for the race. <laughs> you know, if they're swimmer, Olympics is on the mind. If they're a dancer, they're going to Broadway. Yeah, it's a trap that I feel like everybody falls into. And it's, it terrifies me. I hope that I'm like self-aware enough because I made fun of them for, you know, as my career for a majority of my young adult life that like, I'm hoping that if and when that day comes, that I'm not one of those parents and can have like a little bit of a sense of reality and just kind of like let my kid have fun and, you know, understand that like when they're nine years old, it's probably just gonna be a funny story that they bullshit with about their buddy with their buddies, you know, after Euchre night one night, you know, but that shit's tough, man. Everybody thinks their kids the next, you know, Mickey Mantle or Simone Biles or, you know, whatever the hell. And then, all of a sudden they're 14 and they're more concerned with like, you know, going to a party and, you know, making out with some girl than they are with doing baseball swings. And, and then you're like, well, it was a nice run. <laughs> but I think that that is only enhanced when you're the baseball dad, you know, or, or, or the, the, the cheer mom or, you know, the dance dad, whenever you're one of those, that's when the kids are like, well, fuck this. I don't want to do this anymore. This sucks. Unless you're just so extreme, like, uh, you know, like uh, you're like a helicopter parent, like Chris, Chris Bryant's dad, I've heard, is kind of like this. So it's amazing that he hasn't, you know, gotten fucked up yet mentally. But I heard that his dad is like, you know, he was just like, you are going to play baseball, be in the major leagues. You are going to make it when I didn't. And I mean, it worked out, but I feel like there's a few and far between. From Andrew, what positions did you play? Also, got a feel for the feel or hate the coach's kid. They're either the most miserable or the cockiest kid out there. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, when like little league and shit like that. Like when it didn't really matter, I played like shortstop and third base. Um, but then when I got into like bigger ball and everything like that, I moved to center field and um, right. I was had a pretty good arm, and uh, you know, and I could I had some range, so I play out there in the outfield and. Plus, the infield was just too intense for me. I was like, I just want to chill and catch some fly balls and then, like, you know, gun people out at third base. I don't need to be in the infield and the ground balls and the lips and the fucking slide. I, I didn't need all that, you know. I was, I was like, let me just catch some fly balls and go hit. <clears throat> so that's what I did. But, yeah, the coach's kid, yeah, they're either super entitled or they're, like, the ones who are looking at you and they're like, sorry about my dad, man. And you're like. It's all right. At least I don't have to go home with them. <laughs> Mom's waking up with us again. First show choir competition. I thought they were mimicking a fish. Woo! So funny, dude. I like wanted to go to my sister's show choir competitions just because I was like, I wanted to watch the moms and laugh at them and get material out of it. The show choir competitions are pretty nice, though. I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> All right, let's get to a triple shot here before we're joined by Emmett, um, Emmett Skilton, uh, actor who plays uh, young Ed Orgeron, young Coach O on the show Young Rock on NBC. He's going to be joining us here in a few minutes. Looking forward to that. Triple shot, though, number one, first pump. Chrissy Teigen announces that she's leaving Twitter. Wow, who would have thought? Who would have seen this one coming, folks? Is anybody surprised? Hey, Chrissy. Thanks for letting us know. I lost a lot of sleep last night knowing that I won't wake up to the relatable uh, insights and, 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 and um, views of Chrissy Teigen on Twitter. So isn't it funny when people who are celebrities like that like feel the need to let us all know that that's happening? It's like, well, now it's now, – now, okay, so you wanted to get off Twitter to probably like get a break and like – spend time on yourself and like refocus your priorities. Fine. Respect that. But you announcing that you're getting off Twitter then just brings more attention and more shit out there and more people talking about shit. So it's really not doing anything. If you want to just get off Twitter, 
that just delete it from your phone and go away and then people will be like, huh, I haven't heard from Chrissy Teigen in a while. No big deal. No, no one's making a thing about it. Now, because he announced it, you got me talking about it. You got fucking Today Show, I'm sure, talking about it. You got podcasts everywhere, blogs being written, all that kind of stuff. Twitter itself is, you know, she's trending on Twitter, even though she's getting off Twitter, because she's told us that she's getting off. I mean, just exhausting. <laughs> Absolutely exhausting. So, you know, if you haven't seen that yet, and you're wondering where your daily fill of, you know, your, your daily cup of Chrissy is, um... She's going to be gone for a little bit, apparently. She's hopping off. So there you go. Uh, shot two, Evan Peters, uh, actor who, who um, just he, – he showed up in WandaVision. Um, spoilers for having, who haven't watched that. He showed up in WandaVision um, as Wanda's brother. He's been in a lot of other stuff too, really like up and coming actor. He's going to play Jeffrey Dahmer. And uh, he's going to play Jeffrey Dahmer in a Netflix series. And it's like – he looks like him, and I'm sure he'll do a really good job because he's a really good actor. So that's not my concern, but it's just funny that, like, now a super like hot role to get is a serial killer. You know, like back in the day, it was like, you know, oh Robert Redford wants to be Jay Gatsby, or like I want to be uh, Luke Skywalker, or uh, oh to. <clears throat> I don't know, even not back of the day on this, but like, yeah, I made it into the Pitch Perfect series, you know? And now it's like, if the 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 more notorious the serial killer is, the more wanted that role is because everybody's going to watch it. Everybody's so intrigued by the serial killers, man. It's insane. And I've, I'm, in, I, I'm in it as well. I'm like, all right, cool. That'd be good. That'd be a nice little eight-part, like, intriguing series that'll kind of creep me out and suck me in a little bit. <laughs> People have, people are ruthless online with the looks and everything. People have sent me when I had shorter hair. They've sent me like screen, you know, the side by side of me and Dahmer. So don't do that. That's not nice. Nobody likes to be told, you know. At least in my head, I feel like nobody would like to be told they look like a serial killer. But uh, apparently, a lot of people like Ted Bundy in terms of his looks. So who knows? I mean, Zac Efron played him, for God's sakes. Yeah, it's just... Uh, the, the, the worse the person was in real life, the more wanted a role it is. Isn't that funny? And also, like, how many series can we do on Jeffrey Dahmer? And Ted Bundy. And, I mean, the Unabomber, it's like, dude, we know what happened. We got to keep rehashing this. What's going on? Uh, third shot, NBA trade trade deadline today. Um, apparently, some big names going to be on the move uh, at three o'clock. NBA trade deadline looks like Victor Oladipo is going to be out of Houston again. That's what all signs are pointing towards that. Um, so he leaves Indiana. We trade him. And then Houston. As, I don't even think they've won a game and, uh, since he's been traded there. <laughs> you know, grass isn't always greener, my man. So, man, I mean, maybe he'll go to New York or something. They're, they're playing pretty well. Him and Julius Randle be teamed up or something. Finally getting to the biggest market there is. Even though Houston's a huge market, but apparently, you know, he wasn't happy there. I don't know, man. Victor Oladipo. Definitely just more bought into the brand than he is playing. That's fine. That's fine for him. Lonzo Ball might get traded. So will he be on the move again? Go from L.A. to New Orleans. New Orleans maybe who knows where. Um, for Chicago, I think. And then my Pacers, uh, they might be selling. They might have, be having a fire sale as well. They're struggling this year. And they're in the worst possible spot. The Pacers are the worst spot that you can be in in the NBA. They're, it's, it's, it, you know, I love them, but they're just getting to the point where you just don't even care because they're not bad enough to be like, oh, this is all right because we're looking to maybe get somebody tight in the draft. But And they're not good enough to even make the playoffs. They're just there. They're literally just there. And that's the worst thing that you can be in the NBA. They're like 20 and 22 – 
and they might be a couple games out of the playoffs or, or right there at the back end. They're not going to make any noise. They're, they're stuck. So there's been reports that Malcolm Brogdon might be heading out, even though we just traded for him. Um, I don't know, man. I really don't know. Let me message Emmett, see what you get. Uh, he's supposed to be on by now. It's like just, just, just commit to something, Pacers. You know, like just commit to like. Do we? Do you? Do you want to go all in on Turner and Sabonis and Brogdon and try to get this going, or do you want to suck? Just don't be in the middle, man. You're killing me. Absolutely killing me. Anyways, uh, here he is. Uh, Join now. Um, you can you can see him on uh, Young Rock on NBC playing the young Ed Orgeron. Emmett, what's happening, man? Good morning. Good morning, man. How are you? I am good. How are you? I'm disappointed about Chrissy Teigen, man, but I'm good. I'm, I'll get over it, man. I'll get over it. <laughs> yeah, so you, you lost a lot of sleep last night over that, I'm sure, huh? Oh, so much. Well, actually, it's 2.30 a.m. in New Zealand, so I, I just haven't gone to sleep yet. Oh, my God. I was going to say, wow, so you're really waking up with me here. I didn't know it was like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know. Okay, because I didn't know if you were going to be in New Zealand or you were going to be in L.A. or where the hell you were going to be. So I appreciate it. Good, man. Either or. It's all my my pleasure, man. Are you – are you – what do you – you you got some coffee that you're drinking on there? Are you a coffee guy? That's water right now. I'll go to sleep after this. I'm Um, definitely a coffee guy, man. Definitely a coffee guy. Yeah. What kind are you just like, you know, how do you take it? Uh, straight, black. I feel like that's like a New Zealand thing. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah a lot, we, we call it a long black hair, like like an Americano. Uh, okay, yeah. I feel like if in New Zealand, if you got, you know, too much uh, cream or milk or anything, they, I feel like that's just not allowed. You know, they, you'll be they, judged, they, man. You'll be judged very easily. <laughs> I, love the, I love the LSU hat. It's looking well, good. You, it's, it's very on brand. Did they. Uh, did you pick that up when you were in the States? Did they gift that to you? No, I actually got this one. Um, I got other stuff from, from Set, but this one I got um, from a it's a, a company called Culture Kings, which I'm not sponsored by, by the way, oh, um, who, yeah. who do a lot of uh, NCAA stuff, um, yeah. T-shirts and, and hats and things like that. So, yeah, I've been waiting for this one for a while. Shipping right now, not ideal. No, especially I can imagine, uh, you know, getting out there to New Zealand and everything. Not, not, yeah. not the best. So how yeah. does how how I mean, you know, a, a guy from New Zealand and, and you have this opportunity and you get cast as as a young Ed Orgeron, if you know, playing on a show about the young Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I mean, how did this come to be, man? Well, uh, you know, like every every show that happens, there's always an audition process. Yeah, and so so getting this this one uh come across um to me was obviously looking at a picture of ed ogeron you posted a picture of him when he was you know mulleted i feel like he's about 20 years old there and that's actually the photograph that they sent me as a reference i was like right cool okay (laughs) that's something to go off i'll uh all I all I knew about his image was that, and then all I knew about his voice was a couple of videos that they sent me, yeah, saying they're looking for a specific voice here. And for me, um, you know, I'm I'm always been a massive fan of accents and and really specific stuff with voiceover work. I was like, sure, we'll give it a crack, you know. And so when I first auditioned for it, I sent a tape to the states, and they they loved it. They just said, can you can you do it one more time, but so that we can understand what you're saying. <laughs> I was like. Oh, okay. All right. You know, because listen to his stuff. I mean, the real coach, I was, there's so many words and, and phrases that he says that you can't quite understand. You know, I mean, Twitter will be a testament to that. The amount of people that have gone, why can we understand Coach O so much? The answer to that is because we're on TV. And <laughs> NBC is not subtitling Coach O's wrong. So, um, you know, you gotta you got to clean that up for that reason. But, yeah, so when I first auditioned for it, I just like, just went for gold with with his sound and his energy and his attitude towards things and and yeah fortunately enough i I made it all the way through to being on air right now for it yeah man that's that's incredible and you're right like you know when i when i put the the ed orgeron videos that i do out there there's always those people that are like 
It's, you know, that sounds good, but it, I could, I can understand you. So it's not yeah. as much like Coach O. And I'm like, well, you know, yeah, yeah. you don't want to tie it up some way, you know? Right. You don't want to just mumble yeah. through it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and there's, and there's some videos where you can completely understand what he's saying because it's, it's the start of the season. He's probably, you know, hasn't been screaming all day. Sure. And then there's other, other videos where it could literally be Farmer Fran. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, did you have any ref? Like, did you did you watch any Farmer Fran videos at all to give you a? I, uh, dude, I I know Adam Sandler movies so well, so I was avoiding Farmer Fran like the plague. But I was like, but when I first when I first heard the video from my agent, I was like, this, this Farmer Fran has to be inspired by Coach O. <laughs> I, I don't understand how Farmer Fran isn't inspired by Coach O for talking about college football. Yeah. Dude, that's so funny, it, it, and, and and the fact that like, you know, the fact that the water boy is a school in Louisiana, you know, and 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 then you know, and then now we have Coach O and it's the LSU as well. It is. It's like there's some correlation there, and there has yeah, to be. Man. Yeah. Um. So you work. I mean, when, when you work on a show like this about uh, a guy like The Rock and and, and his life. How much uh, interaction, if any interaction, have you had with him? I know he has to have some sort of say in the show. What, what is yeah. that for you? So, so early interaction when we were first developing the characters and the stories and stuff. So uh, we did read-throughs for kind of the month of September and October before mm -hmm. before we got into shooting. And his involvement was, was so he'd be at the read-throughs, but he would also be expressing – how important these stories were to him, how uh, integral these characters were in his life. And he made it very, very clear early on. Like, for example, it's very easy to make a caricature of Coach O. Yeah. But one thing that he was very clear on was these people had a huge impact on his life. And these people are still huge impacts on his life. And he'd want those people to watch it and laugh rather than watch it and feel any kind of belittlement or judgment. Yeah. You know, so so we're trying to tell a story about how much he appreciates these people and what impact they had, as opposed to just sort of funny shit that happened in their lives. Right. In his life, you know. Okay. So yeah. So his involvement, he's. I I would say that not only is he working with the producers and the writers and the directors to tell that story, but for us, it was he was really carrying the heart when we would do the read throughs of here's where we want this world to be, and this is the story that we want to tell. It's incredible. That's got to be, you know, he's such a presence. I, I can imagine that it had to be intimidating to play a role oh, like that for him. Absolutely intimidating, but also really um, like inspiring to hear, firstly, how appreciative he was that this story was existing. You know, yeah. in, in no way was there a, a assumption that he deserves to have this story told. It was always an excitement that he was having the opportunity to do it. Nice. And then, and then on top of that, there was just this he was excited he was he was really he was really happy and when we do the read throughs because obviously he's he has a voice in it as well so when he was he was doing his uh, his read throughs and stuff we'd get to see him trial and error with some of his dialogue and change things on the fly like he's a worker he's a he's a really really hard worker so to see you know someone who's at the top of their game still just trying to figure stuff out on the fly. That's, I mean, as an, as an actor who's, who's on his way up is like, that's cool. That's, yeah. that's the kind of dude I want to be. Absolutely. Do you, uh, do you have any insight? Is he planning a presidential run in America? Oh yeah. yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You heard it here guys. Um, <laughs> I'm not really sure. I think, I think that was always, uh, that, that element of the story was a vehicle to ensure that he was in the show. Um, cause, um, Nanashka Khan, the creator of it, she's a freaking genius. She's got multiple shows that she's made, Birch and Apartment 23, um, Fresh Off the Boat, all these ones that use different devices. But this one in particular was like, how, how do we have Dwayne Johnson's presence in the show when it's a huge flashback world, you know? And that was, that was one way they saw it happening. Um, but I mean, in this day and age with, uh, I mean, the Terminator was the governor of California. So, and then another person was just the president of the state. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't put it past Dwayne Johnson to give it a go. 
Yeah, I mean, he's such a he's such a, a, a likable guy, you know. And it's like, yeah. hey, if he's the president, of the United, who's fucking with us, you know? If he's the president, it's like I don't think so. Hell <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. We'll just send him actually, over. <laughs> you'll actually see it through through the series. He talks about some of his values and his policies. You know, the one that just came out, or episode four that that um, came out uh, in the nineteen ninety, the the Miami era. You know, he talks about mental health and how important it is. Um, you know, not only in, in, in university and college, but also generally for the nation to have, you know, focus on mental health. Yeah. That's the kind of shit that he'd be focusing on if he was a president. So, um, yeah, except for knowing that he'd kick anyone's fucking ass, um, his policies, I think, would be would be pretty damn appealing to. All yeah. right. Who knows? Maybe, maybe in, you know, eight to 12 years, we can look back on this interview and it's like, hey, Joey and Emmett were talking about it uh, first, you know, they were, they were right, right. Right. you're breaking news. Um, okay. So then you had that interaction with, with the rock. I got to know, uh, you know, has there been any back and forth with coach O himself, any meeting of the minds, anything like that? No, but I always, I mean, for me, my, my research was how I met coach O's mind. Um, you know, I, 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 I read everything I could. Um, yeah as as much as possible but uh in terms of interactions i knew he was going to be in as part of the show and for for a reason i i didn't contact him to try and cross pollinate that because he was going to be as you just saw in the in the latest episode he was going to be a surprise pop-up at the end for 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 Dwayne. right so yeah no no contact as i developed the character um but mm -hmm have reached out since and once the season quiets down i'm gonna get my ass over to over to louisiana and hang out dude we should do we should we should double up if you don't mind i like to ride your coattail that we should we should have like and we should take a picture of me you and him and like the circle like i said then spider-man meme and we're all just like pointing at each other you know what? Like, <laughs> yeah man i would love that that would be yeah, bad. Know, the guy who played coach o then the yeah. idiot online who just does an impersonation of Coach Show all just yeah, yeah. Him. Oh, and him just giggling in the middle of that. It was yeah. like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> yeah, man, that'd be that'd be fun shit. I would love that. Well, I, I think uh, it'll be like August September. So uh, I'll hit you up, man. I'm oh there. yeah, I was so I was supposed to go down there uh, last year, last fall, but obviously you know with uh, the pandemic and everything going on, that that changed, and I didn't want my first experience uh, in Death Valley to. To be during that, so I'm hoping that you know, with the vaccine and everything, we can you know by that time September or so can be cleared uh, to, yeah, to go yeah. down there. So yeah, that that that'd be yeah. Awesome. Hopefully the season uh, season gets full capacity. What is it? 102 thousand seat Death Valley. Yep. Yep. Woo. Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of roaring tigers in there. Um, what? So how? When you're playing somebody. As an actor, and 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 obviously, I'm just somebody who does impersonations like online and stuff. But when you go from, what's the difference between like acting as that person and then just impersonating that person, right? Because I'm I'm sure you don't want to just like. There's got to be a difference in there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. And then you've got the added element of being on network TV, right? You know, which so so obviously you got the voice down, right? Yeah. So, we got we got the voice, but also you you want to look at the uh, behavior, the mentality, the values, all these elements that go into the physical, how he carries himself physically, and yeah. then also how he, you know, I've got a script written for me. So how do his, if we're talking about values, how do his values, which the ones for me that are really hard, are, are, are like a hard work, uh, uh, honesty, and family. You know, those are three really big things that helped drive my work and I think also drive um, Dwayne Johnson's work, you know? So I go, cool. That's kind of the values that, that we'd hit really hard on in the story of, of young rock. And if we're hitting hard on those ones for coach, Oh, how do those inform all the decisions I make around how my lines will be delivered or how my, my attitude will be towards him at any one time, you know, cause you don't have one, someone on set going, Hey, here's what coach O would do. Or you don't have someone on on set going, mm, that's not quite a coach O thing. You know, that's that's not the focus of the work. So a lot of that comes on to me of um, you know, what would coach O do? Right. Or how, how would coach O carry himself in this moment? And it all it's it a lot of it is is in the research, you know? Yeah. Like 
um, not only reading, uh, so Bruce Feldman's, both Bruce Feldman's books were good research, um, especially Coach O's one, Flip the Script, but then you've got all the interviews and you see how he, firstly, how he delivers his thoughts, but then if someone asks him a question, how he processes that thought, you know, one of the one of the greatest videos to to tell me who Coach O is, is him him training in an LSU training, where he fucking berates a dude for not. I think it might be no. What is it? Is it about elbows up? I can't remember what it is, but yeah, he berates a dude because um, um, you know, while they're while they're smashing pads in a in a D line um training. Yeah, and then and then of course the one where he's telling the guys to shut the fuck up when they're making noise in a press conference, you that's know, legendary. you go, that's the uncontrolled coach show who, who needed to make a choice in the moment. Okay. And that's where you get taught a lot more about the character rather than the ones that are quite reserved and planned and considered in a, in a 60 minutes interview or in a, um, or in another press conference where he's, he's very clear on, on the direction of the, uh, of the conversation. Yeah, man. The uh, you mentioned your 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 stature, your his coach Joe. Definitely, he's got that presence in his walk, you know, and he's very and 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 you 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 have that for sure. So that's and he's direct, man. Well, so, you know, where, where I lack where I lack pounds in my weight, <laughs> I was looking to looking to give that in his in his energy going forward. You know, he's so I I haven't. I mean. He seems in mo- nearly everything he does like the loveliest dude. But I've also talked to people he's he's coached, and the, you know how firm he is is based on how passionate he is about the work, and that comes oh. out in a really direct way. Absolutely, yeah, no doubt. Uh, you okay? So you said that uh, you you're talking about Farmer Fran and Waterboy, big Adam Sandler guy. What's what's your what's your favorite Sandler or your 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 own couple of Sandlers? Probably Billy Madison, man. But yeah. um. But Waterboy, big fan of as well. Um, and then, you know, ones that are less character, like uh, Big Daddy, you know, Big Heart. Things I like love that. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, yeah. It, it gets yeah. me every time. Like in that end scene, yeah, when yeah. Court, I'm always like, shit, like I start crying and stuff. What about Happy Gilmore? Are you a Happy Gilmore guy? Oh, I love Happy Gilmore, man. Yeah, my brother my brother was a hockey player growing up. He, he still is. But but so so, yeah, watching Happy Gilmore. And, of course, you know, as soon as you get your hands on a hockey stick and a golf ball, you are running at that motherfucker as fast as you can. So yeah, dude. Exactly. And actually, it was great to see. It was great to see them do that. Was it twenty-five year throwback or twenty-year throwback 20, recently? Yeah. Last uh, February was twenty-five years of Happy Gilmore. Yep. That makes me. I mean, I'm only thirty-three, man. But so that means I was watching Happy Gilmore. My mom let me watch Happy Gilmore at eight. Fuck, how's that for parenting, man? We're a part of that same generation. Like, I'm the same thing. Yeah. Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, yeah. I'm like six or seven so years old. Great. Let's go. So great. This yeah. is, uh, let me, this is, uh, we're talking about Happy Gilmore. So this is my dog, Happy. We named him after Happy Gilmore right there. The oh, chocolate. that's so cute, man. I yeah. love that. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen pics and videos with you. Right, cool. After Happy Gilmore. I love that. After Happy Gilmore. All right. Um, hey, man, I know it's super, super late slash early there. Um, I can't thank you enough for uh, staying up with me. And th- this has been a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm, I'm so glad we got to talk and, and meet. Um, can we do a uh, can we do a, a Go Tigers and Coach O uh, on three together? Yeah, man. Can we do that? All right. Here we go. Yeah. <clears throat> One, two, three, go Tigers! Go Tigers! <laughs> awesome, man. And hey, dude, it's my pleasure. And and uh, I've told other interviewers this as well, man. But but your work also helped me with developing that voice, you know, because it's so hard to find find all the specifics you can find. So him combined with his mama Coco and with you, I managed to find all the elements of the voice that I could achieve in that, I love in that, that time. Time. I appreciate it man thank you uh yeah be sure to catch emmett and young rock tuesdays on nbc um eight o'clock you catch that so do we have anything like what's what do we have any sneak peeks or previews of, of next week's episode you can leak or uh next week's episode i can't even think we were up to but we're going back to uh 10 year old dewey i think coming up this week okay. so a lot more wrestling to come gotcha i'd say that yeah, and a, and a few more surprises coming up in the Miami era as uh, as time progresses too, and a few cool faces popping up. So that'll be one's watch. I love it. Now again, Young Rock, uh, catch him at there. 
playing Young Coach O on Tuesdays, 8 o'clock on NBC. Thanks so much, dude. I'll talk to you soon, all right? My pleasure, pal. Take care. There you go. All right. What a conversation, dude. That was fucking awesome, dude. Emmett Skilton right there. You see him. Network TV playing Coach O. Spider-Man meme. Me and him. And Coach O. That's incredible, dude. What uh, what, what a conversation. Um and at 2.30 in the morning up there, or out there, you know? That's insane. Uh, I, I, I figured, I knew that there was going to be a big time difference, but I, I man, what a sacrifice for him to stay up uh, that that uh, that late and do that with me, man. That that, that means a lot. That was awesome. Emmett Skilden, right there. Uh, Young Rock on NBC. What a conversation. I'm excited. In September, we're going to get down there, and, and me and him are going to have a weekend in Baton Rouge, hopefully we'll go down there uh, when they're playing somebody like Central Michigan or something. Watch the Tigers beat the shit out of them and have a, a really great weekend in Death Valley. Link up with Coach O. That'd be awesome. All right, um, let's finish off here uh, with wedding reception songs that never fail to get the crowd going. I got a uh, tag in this tweet from uh, this guy Patrick Hughes. <clears throat> Excuse me. He um. He tagged me, Alex Sulkin, uh, Robbie, Fox. Uh, so we've all been doing this thing on Twitter, and Alec has really started it, um, where he will you know, just randomly, you know, top five New York movie scenes, top five car scenes in a movie, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and he'll tag me and Robbie, or we'll do the same to him. And it always you know, starts up a good conversation and, and, and good shit on Twitter. Um, let me see, 5517. Oh, we got a Bama fan in here. All right, 5517. Hey, don't forget 2019 now, all right? That wasn't too far away, all right? Um, <clears throat> let me get here. Pat Hughes, we'll share this. There it is. Top five wedding reception songs that get the people going. September, Earth, Wind & Fire, Celebration, Cool in the Gang, Give Me Everything, Pitbull, Sweet Caroline, Neil Diamond, Love Never Felt So Good by Michael Jackson. Uh, fun fact. Fun fact, uh, my anniversary is actually on the, the date of September. Do you remember the 21st? Nice, nah, September. Got married September 21st, 2019. Um, so I feel that. So that's a really good list, Pat. That's a really good list. Um, you know, you got the sing-alongs with Sweet Caroline. You can't really dance that song, obviously, but it gets everybody together and doing, you know, their arms around each other and singing and, and ba, ba, ba. Uh, it's September Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah, no, that's that that that's spot on. I mean, that's that's good. I was gonna say that one's kind of hard to dance to as well, but it's just such a good feeling song that people are gonna go, get out there and move to it. So I like that list. So I had my own. So I had my own, and I want to start number five. I want to dance with somebody by Whitney Houston. See, with wedding reception songs, you have to consider all of the elements. You have to consider all the factors. All right, you got to think about not just you know the wedding party, not just the young kids who are invited for or, you know the friends who are still single or just bringing the dates. You got to think about the grandmas. You got to think about the grandpas. You got to think about the moms, big on the wedding reception. The moms. If you get the moms out there, everybody's gonna be out there. All right. I want to dance with somebody by Whitney Houston. That's a banger for a generation of moms and grandmas now. That no matter what, they're gonna get out there. They're gonna shake their you know, what used to be their old puffy hair back in the 80s, and they're going to be singing at the top of their lungs, all right? Number four, Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. Dude, this song, it, it is an absolute must-play at weddings now. I mean, just without a doubt, has to be, you know, either – you can probably play it multiple times. Start things off. Like I said a few, a few days ago, I was the DJ at my sister's wedding reception, First song I played, Shake It Off. And it got people sprinting to the dance floor. I mean, absolutely, like, just they were, they were, they were in, a, in the middle of a conversation in the back of the reception hall where they were at their table still just kind of finishing up dinner. As soon as this song came on, dude, <laughs> and of course. As soon as that drum beat came on, people... Sprinting, dude. The trumpet or whatever that's going. Such a good dance song, man. I mean, like, everybody, nobody knows how to do it when you're on the dance floor, but everybody knows to, to, to shake it off some way, right? 
you like doing this. Don't do this. Maybe doing like a. That's a big one for the moms. Never been anybody sing it. Very good sing along song there. I mean, Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. It, it's crazy that's number four, but I'll explain why. Uh, number three, I said fight song where the couple went to college. Ne it never fails. You go to a wedding. Usually they either met in high school, went to the same college, met in college. <clears throat> or if they met after college, you know, one of them is a huge, I mean, well, one of them is an, an IU alum or whatever. And, 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 you know, it just so happens that their, their uh, spouse is, is an IU partner too. And it's a big deal, you know. Those always have to come on. Like at my wedding, I had like, you know, humble brag, married a Purdue cheerleader. So she had like 15 other former and current Purdue cheerleaders that were there, even a Purdue P and everything like that. So when that song came on, I mean, they all broke out into doing all the crazy shit and everything. I mean, it was, it was big. It's a big deal for a lot of people, you know? Where you went to school is, is a really, really big thing. So that's why it's number three. Number two, uh, YMCA by Village People. I mean, you, you, it's an easy dance that everybody knows. It's, it's an easy song to get out there to. Great vibe. Sing along. I mean, all the grandparents. Again, this, you're getting the grandparents out there. You're getting the grandparents out there. And then once you get the grandparents out there and the great aunts out there, then everybody's like, oh, holy shit, grandpa's out there. Oh, my God, Aunt Marky's dancing on the table at the YMCA. We need to go dance. You know? And then bam, 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 bam. Actually, I'm going to turn it on right now because that, that does, dude. And, and, like, not even at a wedding reception, too, but, like, if you're at a, if you're at a, um, like, a sporting event and this song comes on, dude. I need to get YouTube premium. I hate this. Dude, when this song goes on, everybody is doing one of these. Going out to the dance floor. Uh oh. Uh oh. Come on, Aunt Jeannie. Come on, guy girl. It's the white chair. Look at Happy. He's like, what the hell is he doing? He's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Hopefully, he doesn't flag that one. Here we go. Everybody knows it, dude. Your grandpa, who never dances and never talks, knows it. Your fucking great grandmother, who's barely hanging on, knows it. Your, your, your five-year-old cousin knows the YMCA somehow. Like, you come out of the womb, you just know YMCA. Easy to do. Number two song, no doubt. And then number one, this is an emotional one. Dancing Queen by ABBA. You serious, dude? Dancing Queen by ABBA? That is just like a pulling at the heartstrings. We are fam. Now I'm thinking about it, and I'll get to that. But we are family should probably be on there. That's an honorable mention. When 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 uh, it gets to the part in Dancing Queen where it's like you can dance, you can drive, like everybody's pointing at each other, and everybody's so happy, and just like you're sweaty, and you got a tie on your head, and you don't give a shit. Watch dancing. Dig it, the dancing queen. Dude, I can't wait to throw these songs on after the show. Honorable mention for me. I didn't have any Earth, Wind, and Fire on here. But, but because I feel like you could make a whole playlist of wedding reception songs just out of Earth, Wind, and Fire. So I don't want to clog it with Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, yeah, by Usher. That, that's guaranteed. Obviously, you get the younger crowd. And then when you get like somebody who's older dancing to Yeah, that's when things really pop off. Excuse me. Um, a lot of people were giving me heat for, for no, uh, you know, you make me want to shout. I, I couldn't personally put that on there. 
I didn't personally put that on there on my list because I was like, it's just Wedding Crashers. Like, if that song wouldn't have been in Wedding Crashers at the part where they're at all the different receptions and the girls are flopping on the bed and everything, I really, I don't know if it would be as high up. This is coming from a Purdue guy that, you know, when they get ready to start the fourth quarter at Ross Aid, they, they shout, you know, and, it, and it's amazing. Honorable mention, it's on there for sure. You know, if we were doing a top 10, that would definitely be on there. Top five, no. Nah. You know, I, I get it. It, it, it. It's it's good, but I, I just really feel like Wedding Crashers just really makes it just like Whoa, bachelor reception. Whoa, we gotta have the well, fucking the titties are bumping out. <clears throat> yeah, so love it, love it, love it. Thanks for Patrick Hughes for sending that to me. Give me some content for the show. Uh, thanks to Emmett Skelton for staying up with me. Cocho on the Young Rock on NBC. Catch him every Tuesday night on NBC, eight o'clock. Uh, new episode that he teased said there's going to be some more wrestling uh, coming up. And then uh, a few more Miami cameos and appearances that you're going to look forward to. So thanks to Emmett for that great conversation about you know him playing Coach O. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, be sure to subscribe below. Subscribe below. Like the video. Come back every morning, uh, 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern time. I'm here with you waking up, having a cup of coffee. So subscribe below to the channel. Give us a like on each one of these videos. It helps us to be able to push the algorithm up so people keep joining. We have more fun. New merch. We have the Juju shirt, the Big Ben shirt, uh, the One Last Ride one up now at BarstoolSports.com or Barstool Sports Store. Uh, it's not company time. It's tournament time. And then, of course, you still have your Indian Sanity, your Cup of Joey Dad Hat, Cup of Joey Coffee Mug that are all available. Hell, even your energy, effort, intensity that I wore in the baseball video yesterday. All still available there. Don't miss out on it. I will talk to you guys for Friday, tomorrow, live at 9.